Welcome back into Climbing the Summit podcast, where the ultimate summit is self-discovery, self-realization. And today we're going to talk about what to do when your past sneaks up on you. And a few days ago, Danny's at school. I pick him up. I get word that he was in a tussle. I hear fight. I hear punched in the face. I hear he's he's done got abused by another kid. And the first reaction is, well, my first reaction is, well, thank you for telling me <laughs> to the teacher um, because it's the um, assistant teacher, not the main teacher. So I get a message from the main teacher. Hey, I would love to talk to you. She wasn't there at the time. I would love to talk to you soon. And now I'm going through my head because it's pretty close to the weekend. And and I and all I can do is think about the trauma, the the victimization, the the uh, the things that happened to me when I was a kid. That's all I can think about. And I'm sure that's happened to you too. Something happens to someone else, and it triggers this response, this this thought inside of you. And it sends you into this weird, weird space, if you will. And it, and it's interesting because the weird space that that I got knocked into, uh, it felt super valid to be there, right? When I was in second grade, um, a kid was taking my lunch money. He was picking on me and stuff. So I told the teacher, teacher didn't do anything. Told my dad, my dad's like, you're going to have to handle it. I go in a couple of days later. Oh boy, still picking on me. I got a roll of coins in a in a sock because you know we used to have the tube socks back in the day. And I hit this dude in the head. Now that definitely could have went way worse than it did, right? I had no training. I had no understanding. I wasn't generally a violent kid, but I knew I was tired of this kid messing with me, and I needed to get him off me. I'm not gonna win in a fair fight. This kid was bigger than me, so I just did what I knew to do. And then it was again in fourth grade, I get in a fight. In fifth grade, this is crazy. In fifth grade, I get in a fight with a dude named Evan. I don't even know why I'm in the fight with Evan. I don't talk to Evan. Evan's not in my class. Evan just doesn't like me. I have to assume that's because I'm black. And that stuck with me for years. And what's interesting about that fight is right after Evan fought me, this, like, right after this dude that was on my team, it was the Reds at the time, named Blake, he wanted to fight me right after this other kid fought me. And so I get in two fights in one day. I, I don't really even understand. And in my mind, I'm like, this is my teammate. Why is my teammate beating me up? Like, I'm thinking, did I do anything to him in practice? Did I say something to him? No, I don't. I still to this day can't tell you why I'm in back-to-back -back fights. Right? Sixth grade year, I, I remember vividly this dude ran three football fields to come and fight me at the creek because I talked to his girlfriend. Now, look, I'm talking to everybody at the school. <laughs> I'm going to be 100 with you. Whoever wants to talk back with me, I'm going to talk to them because you don't want to talk to me. You don't want to talk to me. You don't like me for whatever reason that is. I don't know. So, like, I have to question, like, what type of kid was it that all these kids didn't like me? And as I grew up, the thing that kept coming back to me was I was the only black kid at the school. I was the only black kid on the team. And maybe that had nothing at all to do with it. But as, as I got older, that's the only thing that I could think was the cause of these fights. Like, I didn't do anything to the kids. I didn't say anything to the kids that I remember. But maybe I did. And they took it so seriously that they had, they wanted to get in a fight with me. And it's, it's fascinating because um, a few things uh, stay with me here. If you play video games of any sort, uh, I play a game called Overwatch. There's tanks, which are people who have just think of like a uh, like a like a big soldier. That's a tank, right? And then you got your healers who make sure they heal people, and then you got your DPS. Those are the people who do all the damage. So the first person that you go for on the other team is the healers because if you can't get healing, well, then you can't win the fight. And as a healer myself, that's always the first person they came to. But I can't shoot you back because all my power is to heal. It is not to damage. So I don't have this ability to fight back. 
And it, it reminded me of that. Was, was I the healer in this situation? Was I the kid that because I didn't want to fight, I didn't care to fight, they chose me to fight, to pick on because I had no way to really have a recourse? And uh, my son getting into that, that, that tussle like automatically sent me into he's going to have to worry the rest of his life because he is different. And, you know, people talk about that before you have kids. I remember the grandparents saying, well, your kids are going to be different at school. How are y'all going to handle that? And thinking, well, when we get there, we'll deal with it then. And so, like, all these things are wrestling around in my head. And and I can't really see reality for reality. All I can see is all the hurt, all the pain, all the, the torment that I had when I was a kid from being different. So the first thing I do is I go get my son some boxing gloves. I get the little mitts, and I'm like, okay, we're going to start training. We're going to get you comfortable feeling like you feel okay just being yourself. And if a little kid comes at you, you can just pop him in the face. Not not necessarily the first thing you, I would want you to do. I definitely want you to tell the teacher first. I definitely want you to tell me. I definitely want to get away so we could talk about all these things with these other people so that we can come to some sort of understanding. But ultimately, I know, son, you're going to have to live this life yourself. So I want to give you all of the tools possible. Now, because my mind was so fixated on what happened to me, I couldn't see outside of those parameters. Go get some boxing gloves. Go get some mitts. Start training them. See if you can get them in jujitsu. See if you can make sure he is disciplined and he can take care of himself whenever it's time to take care of himself. But it wasn't until I started talking to some other friends and they were like, how old is little Danny? He's like five. He wasn't in a fight. <laughs> That's not what that was. Like they don't even fight over what? And it wasn't until that moment that I recognized that I was so lost in my own thinking that I couldn't see the forest from the trees. Yes, I started talking to Danny about noticing when other kids are not themselves, noticing uh, what you're doing in the moment, noticing these things. I started talking about those things. But in the background of my mind, it's like, oh, this is something he's always going to have to deal with and he might have to fight his way out of this situation. Hey, that might be true. But B, we know what to do in the moment if we don't have a bunch of noise in our head telling us that we got to do this, that, or the other. So what's the best possible thing that I can do as a parent? Find myself. What's the best possible thing that I can do as an individual? Find myself. Be myself. Find that place inside of myself that I feel okay, comfortable, and, and whole. And then live from that place. Teach my son to live from that place. To live from the space of I am whole and healthy. And all I need is to be myself. And the people that I need will attract. The people that I need to be around will be around me. And those who aren't for me will go other directions. They will find other ways. But we can't talk about those things from a place where a child can understand until we find that space inside of ourselves. So I have to do what we talk about all the time. I had to notice. I had to stop long enough to notice that I thought it was all about them, all about the outside. And I didn't even look at the inside. How many times have you and I as human beings stopped looking at what it is that we can do inside of ourselves and we started to think, okay, it's all out there. It's all on them. And that's the moment we pop back into the, okay, I'm here. I'm present. I'm aware. I am doing the best that I can do. And from that space, each and every one of you out there are going to do the best that you possibly can. Yes, you may feel triggered. Yes, something may come up that makes you feel this anxiety, this tension, this whatever it is. But once you notice who you are and where your experience of this thing we call reality is coming from, you can slow down, you can get off the gas, and you're able to start to be 
in that space of present awareness, in that space of giving grace to yourself and others. And you'll know exactly what to do. Yes, you might start teaching your son to do some boxing. Yes, you might go to a therapist and start talking about some of the things, the triggers that have happened to you. Yes, you might get a life coach that'll help you see when you're living in the reality of your thinking and when you're living in reality itself. And when it's an illusion. And boy, can I tell you that most of the time it's an illusion because that's what this thought thing does. It creates this illusion that looks and feels real. And no, you don't have to do what popular culture tells you to do and just do the best with what just happened. When you start to see who and where your experience comes from, you're able to have the truth of your experience bubble up from inside and you'll know what to do. You'll reach out to the friend that'll give you the piece of information that, that you didn't think about in the current moment. You'll do whatever you need to do in the moment. And the reason why I'm not telling you how to do it is because when we understand what's happening, you're going to do whatever it is that you need to do. So just a quick recap. Something happens in the world, you get triggered, you think it's all them. Great opportunity to notice when you're in your reality and when you're in the reality of the world. And if you struggle, the only thing you got to do is notice you're struggling. Get off the gas, chill out a little bit, and the thing that needs to happen will happen. It's that simple. It won't happen before you need it to happen. It very well might not be there when you once it's already happened. But in the moment that you need the real-time intelligence system that you have, it is there for you if you allow yourself to get off the gas and notice. Just because my son got punched doesn't mean that he's going to be in fights for the rest of his life. Just because some kids beat me up when I was a kid doesn't mean that every individual has some sort of vendetta against the people who are different than them. I very well now as an adult can see how those kids, the kids that I got in a fight with, that was their parents. Whatever their parents were doing, whatever was happening in their home, it's just an outpouring of that. And what is the outpouring that you want to feel in your life? Is it hatred? Is it vindictiveness? Or is it love? You have an opportunity each and every moment to lead with love. Go out today, climb your personal summit, and be the love that you want to see in the world today. Mm -hmm.